Hey guys, so are you ready for another Fixing the Flow video? Because some ideas kept me up most of last night and I didn't get a lot of sleep. So I think we need to work on that. Let's go get our notebook to start off with. Um, okay, so we're here with Fixing the Flow Part 5, and it's about don't tear yourself up if your room gets messy, if your space gets messy. Uh, that's going to happen. You're creative. Like, when you're in the middle of a project, especially, things are going to get messy. If you have a big influx of stuff that comes in and you don't have time to put it away, you're going to just dump it on the floor or the table in your space. Like, that happens. We all do it. Don't beat yourself up about it. But at the same time, if you're like me, I need to be able to find things easily that I know are in my room. So I try not to have those piles and messiness last too long. And as soon as I'm done with said project, I put things away. Um, things have to be put away and put away in a way that I can find stuff. Um, because otherwise I just make myself completely insane and I cannot any longer be that person that goes out and buys something because I can't find the same thing I know is in here somewhere. And then I end up with duplicates or triplicates. I just can't do that anymore. It's just too much stuff. And I get too overwhelmed and my muse only focuses on the mess and the enormity of the stuff that I have and not focusing on being creative and creating new things. And in that vein, this series has inspired me to get back into sewing uh, my journey with sewing is a long and arduous one and I have stopped sewing for years at the time and then picked it up again and I've never been able to completely get rid of any of my so all of my sewing stuff um, but the fabric purge we did re recently in one of these videos um, I don't regret getting rid of any of that stuff but it did inspire me to pick up my needle and thread again and start sewing again and specifically making myself clothes like this t-shirt I have on today and actually the pants that you'll see in this video um, and I'm enjoying doing that and at some point I'll have a conversation about that it'll probably be in some of the upcycling videos I'm making right now um, but because I'm doing a lot of sewing and I'm able to keep myself and my space a very fluid environment um, so I can be super creative. Um, I, <coughs> excuse me, um, I removed all the product packaging from my art room closets and the bookshelf associated with it. And I, at some point, will probably get rid of most of that because I am um, slowly working away from doing anything on Etsy. It's just not making me any money. It's a whole separate conversation. Um, but... I was able to, because I did that, create some hanging space in my art room closet for thrifted items I want to upcycle and other big things like my drying rack and stuff like that that I do use here in the art room and I got tired of digging out of the closet outside the art room. Anyway, it worked out really well and I'll show you guys here in a video. Um, I also discovered because I was doing that, I really like having stations in the art room a sewing station, a main work table station. Um, we have the inspiration station, which we're sitting in right now. Um, and I really need to work on the painting station, which leads me to the sections and categories I made er early on in this book, painting and watercolor, um, mediums. Ah, packing supplies were on here. I didn't even know I broke that down. I took care of that. It's not even in here. And like I said, at some point, maybe even today, I'm going to go through that and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of stuff. Um, so in that note, I'm going to leave that open because I'm going to need to cross stuff off when we're done. Um, so I think today I'm going to show you the few little changes that I made, mainly in the closet, 
Um, I did also create some large canvas like floppy bins for upcycling things like I have one that's just full of blue jeans because I've been doing a lot of stuff with blue jeans and they live on the floor under the hanging section and that actually is working out super well for me. Um, the temptation is of course going to be save every scrap and every piece because maybe I can use it someday because I have the I might need a someday disease. I'll show you the garbage bag. We're not doing that. I have the garbage bag and the only reason it's still up here because it is getting kind of full is because I'm not sure if I should just put it in the neighborhood recycling bin. Is there someplace better in the Portland area to recycle literally fabric scraps, small pieces and threads? Not anything that's necessarily usable to anybody. Um, if you know, leave it in the comment below because I'd love to know. Um, I, there is a place online that you can like buy a, buy a bag and fill it up with whatever and then they take it and recycle it. That's all well and good but I don't want to spend the 20 bucks to buy a bag. So anyway, <sighs> fixing the flow. We're still working on it because it's a constant pro uh, job in progress. I don't know about you, but it is for me. All right, let's turn the camera around to see the progress we've made, what's working, what's not, and see what, how we can fix it today. All right, let's get started. This is the tool desk. And I had to, in the midst of sewing, film a couple of art journaling videos. So I set up the camera and um, some lighting over here in the corner on the tool desk. And while that works for me, um, then you can't use the tool desk. Um, I did discover I kind of working like working at a smaller desk for doing my painting and stuff. So we're going to be clearing off the tool desk. And I think we're going to be redoing the acrylic painting corner to be a painting corner. And we are going to be working on... Um, making this work better for whether I want to work at the easel, this big easel, where are we, this big easel, or the watercolor easel. And we're going to see if we can get them both in the corner. I'll still be doing art journaling at one of the desks or the big table in the center of the room, more than likely, but I would love a place where I can just sit and paint, then leave it dry, walk away, and then maybe go over here, here, and do some sewing. Um, so I really like that and the behind the ironing board is one of our two bits banks this is products and tools this one is more fabric patterns and mixed media supplies which is a constant thing I'm going through and purging because this is just a lot but for now I'm happy with what I have it's working for me. Notice a folding table, a couple of card tables, a chair. These are all parts that I might or might not need for that corner that we'll work on in a minute. It was in the closet and I got rid of one of these um, black bookshelves I had in here. I had two of them on this side. And I would, now I'm able to get some hangers in here and some um, thrifted items and actually honestly some items from my closet I never wear we're going to upcycle them and make them into things I will wear. Be that person that never wore anything I sewed for myself because I was afraid of judgment. Um, oh did you make that? Oh that's cute. Um, I don't care anymore. I'm going to make things I love. I'm going to make things that are comfortable and um, I'm going to have my room arranged in a way that allows me that creativity and self-expression when I need it in whatever form it comes. So today we are going to work on the painting nook. Now my art room has two of these little alcoves. Um, they're not super big. Um, it's like two and a half inches too short for my old um, craft show table which is four feet. So. I'm not sure that's going to work in this space. It might in a certain respect. We'll have to see. First, I have to clear it out. So, all right, let's get started.
Okay, I'd love to make this my painting and filming station. Ideally, I'd love a desk under the window. Look at my plants, do some painting. The window sill is kind of low, but that's okay. I have some ideas about that. Um, will that work out that way? I don't know, but let's see if we can make something work. All right, let's give it a shot. Why do I have this feeling this might lead to some purging? Because doesn't it always? I'll show you guys some better shots in a minute, but I think the watercolor part of the painting corner, the painting nook, is looking really good, and that's definitely something I can work with to do my abstract painting. The, the um, tripod is in the corner. I don't need to put the light up because there is a light in here, plus we're in front of the window. Now I need to work on the <coughs> acrylic painting table, and then put the plants and things back that are going to go in the window. Oh, clear off the cart, do something with the easel. There's a lot still. I'll be back. If you're doing something like this, there's a lot of time just standing back and looking. And you might think you get it finished, and then you work in the space a couple times and you have to tweak some things, for lack of a better term. That's totally normal. Don't beat yourself up about it. That's what I'm doing right now. That works and the nice thing about using this wooden chair is not only does it fold up and it can just go in the corner by the tripod when I'm not sitting here in front of the window it's also a gift from a very dear friend we actually have two of them she's not doing well and I love having her think she's gifted me in the art room all right I think it might be time for going through acrylic painting tools and paint all right, I'll be back.
Okay, I think the painting corner is working. The flow seems to be good. Right in front of the window, I've got my abstract watercolor stuff, which is gonna be great. I can't wait to just sit here, sip a cup of coffee and paint. It's gonna be nice. Um, and the acrylic is behind me. The only thing is I've got two, I've got two water things over here to dip brushes in. Do I need two? Do I really need to be that compulsive about separating watercolor brushes, brush water from acrylic water? It's not like I'm not going to rinse it out in between. I don't know. Okay, I think this works better. Um, just having one cup of water right here in front of the abstract watercolor stuff, I think that's good. Um, I will probably just use the one for all the painting in this corner, but I do have others. I think for right now, I need to just put the others away. Um, the only one I'll leave out that's on the tool table, the tool desk is dirty paintbrush can. Um, and I might even put that away for now. I really need to keep um, surfaces um, relatively open um, and the floor and everything. I try not to put too much stuff on the floor, although I've been working on paring down my acrylic paint um, stash and um, I've done pretty well with that. I got down to from nine bins to six and I'm gonna let go of some stuff. So now I only have four, three bigger ones and one tiny, tiny one. Um, so that's, we're slowly gathering speed on that. That does mean I still have two bins on the floor, but that's okay for the moment. Um, I think this is gonna work for me really well. So, I th and I have over in the corner back there, I have my bigger tabletop easel, should I need it, and um, my inspiration folders and some extra watercolor paper, that works. I'm gonna put a few things away and I'll be back. I didn't go far with the water things. They're on the drying shelves behind the work table. Um, <clears throat> and I did put a few things away, but I can tell you getting them out of this spot, super good idea. Um, and then if I need them, they're not too far. They're over there and I can just grab one. That, that works well for me. Nice to have a little bit of extra readily handy storage space, whether you're using for, for projects that are in progress and are drying or just to put things like those water containers. Okay, let's put some more stuff away and see where we can get with this and how many things we can cross off our fixing the flow list. I think this is already fixing the flow in my art room a lot. I'll show you when I get everything situated. I just put a bunch of stuff away and I've got some paint on the table to let go of and I'll bring you over there and show you what I'm going to do and tell you why um, in a minute. But I just put a bunch of stuff away and walked back in the room and this corner feels so much better. Open and inspiring and I can breathe and I can look out the window. Ah, I can't even tell you. I love it so much. The only thing I wish is that I had some little corner shelves for my plants but they can sit on the windowsill. I don't really open the window that much, but if I do want to open it, I'll just move them, open it, and put it back. I mean, it's not that big a deal. All right, let's go to the table. Okay, so one of the things I'll do with this stuff that's left is take some pictures of it, and I'll post it on my Buy Nothing group um, for my area where I live. Um, Buy Nothing is a group um, they have them all over the place, so look for buy nothing and then wherever you live. Um, and it's people who want to let go of stuff and they're just giving it away and they post it on there for sale, uh, not for sale. They post it on there and um, yeah, then somebody comes and gets it. So yeah, all right. Okay, sewing station, um, tools. Bits Bank, tools and extra glue and stuff that I still need to work my way through or something. Tool desk, and by tools I mean like rubbing alcohol and tape. There's a bin down there of just tape. You know what I mean, right? Okay, anyway, tool desk. 
I did put this chair back over here because I do occasionally like to use it when I'm at the tall easel. But tool desk, said tall easel. Our new watercolor desk in the painting nook, the painting station. This is one end of my computer desk, but now it's got the acrylic mediums and mark making tools, baby wipes, said computer desk, inspiration nook or station, random office supplies that I can't do anything about at the moment, storage closets, stencils and small bits bank. This is a rolling Ikea cart I use for when I'm journaling, working on various products. This is the said bag of fabric scraps I said I talked about earlier. I don't know what to do with that. And then drying racks and ready everyday commonly used stuff that I always seem to need at the work table and dress form. She still doesn't have a name, by the way. Okay, that fixes a lot of workflow problems in my room, in my space. Some things that, while I was having fun sewing, and I'm still I'm having, I'm not stopping that anytime soon. You know, there are times when you want to work on one project like me with the sewing, but at the same time you want to stop and take a break for a bit and do something else, but you don't necessarily want to put all the sewing machines away and you have to clear off the desk. I did that in my old room. My old room was only 10 by 10. I'm luck I'm very lucky to have a large room where I can have stations. Um, but even in my old room, if I had done better or known better, I could have had things like my sewing machine out all the time in a, in a corner. Um, and then also had, you know, a work table that is, you know, blank and empty unless there's a project in progress. Um, but you have a little station where the sewing machine's over here on this table, your painting stuff's over here on this corner. Um, for me, I think that's really the way I need to go to be creative. That doesn't work for everybody and it doesn't work for everybody's space, but for me, it definitely works, especially in this space. I can now cross off, oh, let's see, a few things. Mediums. Mm, we still have to address packing supplies. And I'm not so sure about mixed media. I'm going to circle that one. Decor, packing supplies, random stuff. I did as part of my sewing, um, find some things in my costume closet. Yes, we have a costume closet um, from uh, Ren Fair Days uh, that don't need to be in the closet because I'm either gonna incorporate them into my everyday wardrobe or hang them up here in the art room, which I did. And um, a couple of jewelry pieces I put downstairs in my jewelry box because why not wear them? They don't do any good up there. Um, so we will talk about decor. And for me, I hang things up in my space that make me happy, that make me smile. My own work, friends' work, um, it's a little visually cluttered probably, but it makes me happy. Uh, so we can cross off number five. So if you don't know where you want to go with your creative journey, you have no idea where to even get started and you have to figure out what it is exactly that you want to do to express yourself through your creativity. Did you know I wrote a book? Yes, I did. It's available on Amazon. This is it. Um, it's a Amazon print-on-demand book. It is a workbook, so on one page it's going to have um, something written by me, and on the other page it's going to ask you a question. The back of the book says, Do you want to have a more creative, self-expressive life? So do I. Here are some things I use to keep myself on track. They work for me. Who knows? They might work for you, too. And you know, work through the book and maybe these things will work for you, maybe they won't, but maybe at least it'll help you figure out where you want to go with your art and creativity. Because if you have those moments where you walk into your art room, your craft room, you look at it and you just want to turn around and walk out, we've all been there. 
and the inspiration and flow in your room isn't working for you anymore, you're not sure where you want to go with your creativity, if you want to go with your creativity, you need to work through it. There's no easy way around it. Don't rush and get rid of everything. It's not about being a minimalist or a maximalist. It's about having a space that works for you. All right. So I worked through some issues today that make me very happy. I still don't know what to do with the bag of fabric scraps, but I'll figure it out eventually. Again, if you have ideas, leave them down below. That's it for today. Um, if you want ready access to me and to ask me questions, to follow what I'm doing on the daily, think about becoming a patron. I do have a private YouTube channel for them. They have a private Facebook chat with me, um, among other things. So um, the link for that is down below. And I do help them with their craft rooms. And we have um, video conference calls and stuff like that. So yeah, think about becoming a patron and I'll help you with your space if I can. Uh, and yeah. The most important thing is to go out and have a good day. Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'm going to enjoy my space and have some lunch. I'll see you later. Bye, guys.